Hi there, and in this video I want to talk about Goated Inherited Sins. This is a topic that if you try to look for it in the documentation, if you look in here, Rated Sins, okay, you will see that you will literally find no information about it. They are currently working on a documentation, but right now there is little to no information out there on the internet, and it is a pity, because you are going to be seeing in this video the true advantage of this amazing feature. So how this works is that basically, for example, you may have a base character scene, and from here you may have two different, okay, inherited scenes. So in this case, for example, you may have a wizard scene, okay, and a player scene, and these two are gonna have some behaviors that are the same, and another ones that are gonna be different. So for example, okay, they both may have some kinds of movement system, okay? they both are going to be having collisions and for example in a 2d game they are gonna both have a sprite or well in a 3d game a 3d model and from actually from here we're gonna be seeing the differences so for example for for the movement they are gonna be slightly different so for example the wizard is gonna directly move towards the player let's say the collisions are gonna work a little bit differently because for example if this wizard is the enemy then well the collision that i want to attack with it is the collision of the player sword and if that happens for example this wizard should lose lives and for example in the case of the player the movement okay is gonna directly be based on the input that we provide in four or eight directions or whatever it is and the collision is in this case is gonna be against the the wizard potions for example that it may it may shoot using this uh, this weapon so we can start to see some stuff that is same or very similar and stuff that is gonna be completely different and this is where inherited sins start to play a vital role the same thing with the sprites, okay, yes, they both are going to be having a sprite, an image that is going to be rendered. The difference is that exactly the, the image that they are going to be rendering is not going to be the same. The player is going to be rendering a knight, for example, whereas the wizard is going to be rendering a different image, it's going to be rendering a wizard. So once that we understand all this, what we need to do is to create a brand new base scene. So for this case, for example, let's go to the area to the node okay to create a brand new area to know i'm gonna be calling it base cards i like to call my base classes or my base uh, scenes exactly that base and the actual scene so we can easily differentiate it and i want to add the two things that i wanted it to contain basically a sprite and a collision shape and let me super quickly set this up so for example something like this and let's save it in a brand new scenes folder okay and now, how do we create these inherited scenes? Let's right click on our on this scene, okay? And let's do new inherited scene, okay? Now, this new scene, we can rename its root node to, for example, player, and we can save it directly there. And as you can see here, we have nodes that are completely yellow. These are the nodes that it's inheriting, and we cannot delete. So if I wanted to delete the sprite, as you can see, can't operate on nodes, on nodes uh, the current scene inherits from, so we cannot delete them but we can modify them. But we can modify any of their properties. So if I go to the sprite and well, the player, you actually have this color or let's actually play around with it. So we could modify its texture. So let's say that we have another texture for this one. So we could directly do clear and loading whatever we wanted. Uh, or for example, modify its modulate. Okay, so let's make it green. For example, let's save the changes, and as you can see, these changes are not going to be applied to the base character, okay? This is, let's say, an override, okay? And if we want to come back to the original state, we can just revert the change, okay? So, pretty easy logic. The same thing with the collision shape. Let's say that, for example, we want our player to be slightly smaller, so let's go to the scale of this thing, and let's make it 0.65, so the collision shape size should also be modified. And once again, these are just overrides. They are not going to take place in the base character here they have taken place because here the collision shape sh shares a resource which is the shape so we can directly click over here make unique resize this again save the changes and this should now take place over here if we make this one unique as well save the changes make it smaller 
and now this shouldn't have reflected over here as you can see this one has a radius of 68 and this one has a radius of 38.05 and basically any change that I do to the base character is gonna be reflected into the player. So let's say that for example, later on, we want our base character to contain some particles, okay? So let's say from the GPU particles, let's save the changes. And when we go to a player, we also have these particles. Let's super simply uh, just create um, the an effect or something that we can see. Or actually, if we zoom in, we should be able to see something or we'll actually not because we don't have a process material. So let's create it over here. And now we do see something. Um, so let's, for example, uh, change the color or, or something like that. So color and let's make it pink. If I save the changes, this also takes place over here. So that is the key because then you're going to be adding more stuff to your character and you don't want to be copying and pasting notes all over around. Okay. So this is for it. Let's create a new inherited scene for our enemy or actually wizard. Okay, and let's save it. There we go. So what if we don't want our wizard to have uh, these particles? So we could directly hide them, for example. And as you can see now, the base character. Well, actually here I have deleted these particles, so let me add them again. So let's say that we don't want our wizard to have these particles. We can just hide them. And as you can see, the player does have the particles, the base character also has them, okay, but uh, they are just visible on the base and the player, but not in the wizard. Once again, this is an override. Now, let's say that, for example, in our wizard, we want to change the sprite. Or, yes, we can change the texture, we can do whatever we want. In this case, I don't have any sprites, but so I will directly play around with the modulate. Let's make it red, okay? And in this case, let's make it even bigger so that we can see the override. So let's make it, in this case, 1.25. And let's increase the size of the collision. Okay, so now here we start to see all the overrides. Once again, remember to make your shapes unique. Or if not, okay, uh, what you can directly do is in the base, directly start the shape completely empty. And then in every single inherited scene, you create your own shape. Therefore, the, in, in this way, you are not going to be having duplicated resources or anything like that. So now if I make the wizard super big, the player is not gonna take place, neither the base. And lastly, okay, what we can do is to add a main scene, okay? And in here, instantiate both. So let's instantiate the player, the wizard, okay? And let me move the wizard, for example, over here and the player, let's say, in the middle. So right now, this is just a different kind of node structure difference. So in reality, what you could do is say, okay, the wizard has to have nodes that are different from the ones that has the base so I, I can't actually come up to an example right now but let's say that for example we want this to have a canvas a canvas layer and we want here to add a color rect to represent the health for example this could be a pretty simple example so let's put this thing over here for example and let's scale it in I know this is like a super quick example okay let's say that we want this to be like this. So this is also something that uh, you can do. Well, this is not well aligned, but I believe that you understand the point over here. There it is. I should have added a canvas layer. And well, once again, you see that the wizard has a color rect, which would be the health and the player doesn't. So you can start to apply as many overrides as you want. So this is the base of inherited scenes. Now, the other thing that I was mentioning of, okay, different behaviors, okay, uh, that is going to be a little bit more complicated and is digging a little bit deeper into this topic, which I don't want to cover in this video because it, it, it will be super, um, super big or super long, sorry. But well, if you go to the channel itself, you're going to be finding a full guide on inheritance, basically on inherited scenes, inherited scripts and all the information. So here, this is like the full tutorial. So you can check it out and even you can also watch this other one, which is also like a continuation of this one or an update to this one. Okay, no, sorry, not this one. This one I wanted to tell you, okay? So you can watch this one and this one and it's gonna be pretty good information for you. If you like my explanations and you want to continue learning Godot, I have two full Godot courses. If you use the link in the description down below, you're gonna be getting huge discount. This Godot course is about 11 hours long. As you can see, it's a pretty uh, new uh, course. It already has 14 students in. 
is this the latest one then you have another one that has been here for a, a longer time which has many reviews 40 students but it's a little bit more concise and straight to the point once again with the screen with the link description down below you're gonna be able to get it at a huge discount and even a full unity course of more than 21 hours of content in the description down below you have a coupon code so you're gonna be able to save a lot of money all the links are in the description down below